Marketing Monday, food marketing edition featuring Bergsy. Now you might be asking yourself, why? Why, Atrack? why food marketing? Well, food marketing is actually really, really interesting. And for one particular reason to me, money. <laughs> That's why I'm interested in food marketing. There's a lot more of it <laughs> in food than in almost any other field of marketing. And you're probably wondering why you're thinking Atrioc, that doesn't make any fucking sense. Okay, you work in tech. There's gotta be more money in tech. In gaming? You know how big gaming is? Well, this, my friends, is the average amount an American spends on food annually. It's $7,000. And this is the average American. That includes every American, rich or poor. And when you spend a lot of money on food, <laughs> that creates a lot of people that want that money. That's a lot of competition. And when there's a lot of competition between products that are essentially indistinguishable, they serve the same need, okay? Your hunger, the only way they can differentiate themselves is through marketing. And so the marketing in, fa in food has gotten extremely good. For example, if I were to buy engine parts, okay? <laughs> Those are very specialized. I, I have exactly what I want in mind and I go to get it, okay? So marketing is not gonna affect very much what I buy. But with food, all I have is a built-in thing in the brain that does half the marketer's job that makes me hungry. And I constantly have to find new food to fill that gap. And marketers can compete basically through differentiation in their brands to get me to buy it. I want you to compare this to tech real quick. I want you to imagine that you are a rich gamer, like <laughs> the kind of gamer everyone makes fun of on PCMR. <laughs> Let's say you're the type of person that buys a brand new 3090 or 3090 equivalent every three years at, at retail price, okay? So you must be really hardcore. You are a small percentage of the population. So that means on average, you're gonna spend $500 a year on graphics card. That's what I would try to capture as a marketer. Let me compare that to how much the average person spends eating out. This is the average, this is everybody. This is every single person in America spends about three grand a year eating out. So in terms of the amount of money at play here for marketers to capture, it, there's no comparison. <laughs> Food is the dominant industry. So you can see like every one of these chips solves the same consumer need. You want a, a chip to snack on. You got the munchies. How do they stand out? Marketing, okay? So they're in a constant fight over tiny percentages of market share. And that's why tech companies will often hire people who used to work in these industries in marketing because they're the most experienced. They've been in battle the most. All marketers do is eat hot chip and lie. <laughs> if you think that you choose food based solely on taste, you are lying. <laughs> you are you are lying to me. You are, <laughs> that's, that's major, major cap, okay? There have been many, many studies uh, that show that how a food appears uh, directly influences how you rate it, how you think it tasted. So this is the test I wanna talk about. People taste tested these two wines, okay? They described the one on the left as light, airy, hints of passion fruit, banana, minerals, a little bit of flint, they said. The right one was rich, full body, a deep taste. It was the same wine with food coloring. <laughs> And this study was repeated. <laughs> the real takeaway from this is that our brains are completely scrambled up with the, with the senses. It all overlaps. Memory, taste, touch, sight, scent. It all is just cluster fucked together in there. <laughs> and there's no way of untangling it. And so when we think we're only isolating based on taste, we're really using a variety of things to try and create a picture in our minds. And that is what marketers take advantage of. Uh, let me talk about some other companies that have uh, done some little tricky secrets <laughs> uh, to get your dollar. For example, one of the main things they'll do is they will rename products <laughs> that have been named the same way for thousands of years in an attempt to make you think it's something new and sell it for a higher price. For a great example is the rockfish. The rockfish was a fish that's been around forever and sold for $10 a pound. Relatively recently, they rebranded it as the red snapper. <laughs> And they now sell it for $24 a pound. It's the same fish. I mean, Taco Bell does this on the reg because Taco Bell literally has the same five ingredients. They don't change the ingredients they send to the stores. They just reshuffle them around in different ways, call it something new. <laughs> no, you are lying to me, Atrak. I choose to eat only the crunchiest of mommy's tendies. To imply that I, a YouTube frog, could ever be influenced by marketing 
is pure insanity, and I resent the implication. Obviously, I was talking about everybody but you. You're a Sigma male. You're outside of the system. Marketers can't touch you, and that is why you're the king. That is why you only accept the finest of attendees. Of course. Uh, but the most sneaky one, the one I want to talk about the most, the most sneaky, is for a long, long, long time, we just didn't give a shit about health. We, you know, I mean, people smoked four packs a day. They ate a steak and a gallon of milk and then went to bed, all right? People didn't give a shit. And then everyone got really, really, really obese and they became kind of a problem. And so in recent years, you know, we've slowly started to say, hey, we should probably eat less sugar. And so a big one that's been happening is that people are afraid of high fructose corn syrup. They'll look at the box and see if it has high fructose corn syrup. If it does, they're afraid to buy it. So what they've been doing, this is only one of many, many names, is they have legally found almost any other name they could put on the label other than high fructose corn syrup. I've found 10. They'll call it fructose isolate, fructose syrup, maize syrup. They'll use the Indian name for corn and call it maize syrup. <laughs> They'll call it isoglucose. This is a good one because it's you don't know what the fuck that is. Isoglucose. You just They want to include fruit in there because fruit sounds healthy. They'll call it fruit fructose. <laughs> They'll call it HFCS for short, especially if they have a small package. They'll just shorten it to HFCS, so you don't know what the fuck that is. And they'll call it crystalline fructose. They have about 10 different names they'll use other than this one, because they don't want you to find out that it's basically all the same thing, and you know it's unhealthy for you. This one is a, an intriguing example that I thought was funny of what marketers have done. So in Australia, <laughs> in 2004, <laughs> uh, there was a locust plague, and the government was like, fuck. <laughs> We have all these locusts, and of course, everyone hates and despises locusts. What if we can get people to eat them? <laughs> and so they came up with this plan to call locusts sky prawns. <laughs> the government of Australia spent millions of dollars on an ad campaign to turn locusts into sky prawns. They launched a book called Cooking with Sky Prawns that had 20 recipes. <laughs> and tried to drive up the demand. Now, unfortunately, I did my research. I couldn't find out how successful this was. But <laughs> if you're still enjoying Sky Prawns in Australia, I got some bad news for you about the source of those tasty, delicious luxury treats. The dolphin fish. This is a perfectly innocuous name. And in fact, this fish has nothing to do with dolphins. But consumers were concerned that they were somehow harming dolphins when they ate it. <laughs> It had nothing to do with dolphins, but they were like, well, I don't want to be, I don't want to kill a dolphin for this fish. If you think about it for two seconds, you realize you're not killing a dolphin, but the fact that dolphin was in the name was insurmountable. So they changed it to Mahi Mahi, and again, sales skyrocketed through the roof. <laughs> again, it's not just taste. Marketers have quickly realized it's not taste. How things are presented is the difference between billions of dollars of revenue and nothing. It's not just naming, it's also visuals. If there's one thing I've learned from food marketing, it's how important visuals are. Food marketers understand this better than any other field because you're already going to be hungry, okay? The interest is already built into our, our bodies. It needs to look good. And having it look good is so important. And I am not qualified to talk about this, okay? You know who's qualified to talk about this? Today's special guest. Bergsy! Author, entrepreneur, crypto investor, and relatable Gen Z burger. Hey, 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 guys. Hey, it's me, Bergsy. This is my social earlier where I said sun's out, bun's out. And obviously, like, I got a ton of engagement, but not, like, not a lot. I almost considered deleting it. And it got me thinking about, like, all the pressure there is from all these, like, glossy burgers in the fast food magazines to look good. And, and it really puts a toll on your mental. Like, I've been working out, but, like, I still feel like I'm not good enough. I don't know if you guys can relate or whatever. So I thought I'd give a talk about some of the tricks of the trade that turn like a burger that looks like this into a burger that looks like this. You know what I'm saying? People aren't what they cracked up to be on social media. You know what I'm saying? Like you get these burgers in real life and they're, they're all talk. They're all online Twitter fingers, you know? This burger looks pretty delicious, right? I think that looks pretty tasty. It's kind of a thirst trap. One of the first tricks marketers will do is it's drastically undercooked. <laughs> That's how they keep it plump. So once you cook a burger, it shrinks a little bit. And so uh, they'll make it raw 
basically nearly raw but if it's if it's raw how does it look grilled how do they get these grill lines like look at those beautiful sultry grill lines god damn you know like sheesh you know what i'm saying i see those grill lines i'm going to do something bad the truth is they're fake <laughs> yeah they're not really from a grill <laughs> They just add them. It's just a, basically a raw burger, a near raw burger. And they add the grill marks fake. Uh-oh, shoe polish. <laughs> yeah, they'll just basically paint shoe polish onto the line, the grill marks to make them pop. <laughs> so basically, when you see a food, <laughs> a burger in an ad, it's a raw, <laughs> painted on burger covered in wax and shoe polish. And it looks good, but that's not how food's eaten. Am I right? You know, can we all be a little more authentic on social, a little more real? The trend for this has gotten so bad, marketers basically noticed that if you add grill marks, it sells better. And so now, often, frozen food is delivered to grocery stores with grill marks painted on. So when you buy, this has never touched heat in its life. But that is a frozen cut of chicken with grill marks painted on. And you can buy this at a grocery store. It's literally frozen. Anyway, one one more thing that um, I thought was interesting. Because, you know, I'm a big fan of cereal. a -Trag loves Golden Graham, so he's always eating cereal, so I'll join him. And in fact, he might be eating some right now off camera. Because, like, the picture on the right is what it looks like when I make cereal. But the picture on the left is like what it looks like in all the ads. And I'm like, why doesn't mine look like that? And it's because that's literally glue. Like, not even a joke. Like, most pictures of cereal you see on boxes, literally it's filled with glue. And it helps the food stick in the right spot for photography. <laughs> and it looks like it has more of a shine and a pop. Anyway, that's sort of my PSA. I don't want to take... Too much of your time and I get a little nervous in front of crowds like this. I don't know if you can relate. So I'm going to give it back to Atriox. Um, and I just want you guys to, if you really like my content, you know, please consider subscribing to Atriox because I get all the money. Oh, also one more thing. If you are feeling depressed, consider buying like a value meal because the great value from a place like McDonald's or Burger King will make you feel a lot better. Can we give it up for Bergsy? <laughs> Holy moly. Despite being, you know, a youthful Gen Z burger, he still did a fantastic job on camera. I, I guess it was decided long ago that, that the idea of fruit is healthy. And so anytime they can add the word fruit to anything, they will do it. And so one of the big ones that you hear a lot is made with real fruit <laughs> that essentially means this shit is candy <laughs> if you see made with real fruit assume that this is candy <laughs> fruit roll-ups is candy <laughs> when you look at the ingredients it's very obvious that it's mostly just sugar <laughs> but if they add even like a drop of fruit juice they can call it made with real fruit there's nothing healthy about it another one is grass fed <laughs> they'll make up these phrases that have no enforcement the usda does not enforce these phrases, okay? So you can make it up. The first 10 months of a cow's life, they're almost all fed grass, and then they're transitioned to grain. And so as long as they've eaten grass at one point in their life, they can say safely that it was grass fed. All you have to do is give them grass once. <laughs> this is most likely a grass fed cow. <laughs> they had some grass when they were small, and now they're in like this factory farm, but they don't put this on the packaging. They put this image to kind of distract you. <coughs> this one's for like real California types. They'll say non-GMO. I barely know what the f that means. <laughs> Essentially, almost nothing is non-GMO at this point. And the FDA has publicly stated that it will not, it will, it was, it has said specifically, it will not enforce any standards on non-GMO labeling. <laughs> So companies will just slap it on anything that's not selling. And hopefully it'll improve sales. Another one back on fruit <laughs> is this one. <laughs> where they say 100% juice. <laughs> now 100% juice is very interesting. Because <laughs> fruit juices are generally delicious. 
but they're also expensive. And so to save money, what companies will do is include a bunch of cheap shit, like white grape juice, <laughs> unfinished pear extract, like a bunch of things. And what they end up with was something that's 100% juice. <laughs> it's not the juice you bought. <laughs> If you buy a, 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 a you know, like a, a bottle of apple juice, you're not getting a bottle of apple juice. You're getting some apple juice and a lot of like <laughs> grape juice, white grape juice, but it's 100% juice. The only place you're gonna get 100% juice is XUC Stream. By the way, his music video, if you haven't seen it, is absolutely fire. <laughs> Free range doesn't mean anything. It doesn't, it's not defined. And the amount, like, if it's called free range chicken, there is no defined time for how long that chicken needed to have been on free range. It can literally be four minutes. <laughs> so free range means nothing. And then FDA approved is like, <laughs> you pretty much can't sell food unless it's FDA approved. But apparently it makes consumers think it's safer. They'll just put like, that's like saying exists. <laughs> You're increasing the vegan. I'm not vegan at all. I, I literally, <laughs> my food pyramid, if I were to draw it, let me, I'll make it for you right now. Okay, this is my food pyramid. Let's get a box of these at the top. <laughs> and then let's get a Chipotle steak burrito. <laughs> and that is what it takes to be a God gamer. If you guys want to know the diet, basically it's four parts Chipotle steak burrito, one part golden grams. But I'm also not stupid. I know <laughs> that most of the things I eat <laughs> when I don't uh, pay attention are unhealthy. And I'm also very aware that I'm getting um, marketed to when I see all that stuff in the box. But when I first noticed, it was actually uh, quite a few years back when I worked at Twitch, I had this addiction to Pop-Tarts. I would eat Pop-Tarts for breakfast. I don't know. I didn't think they were healthy, but I didn't think they were bad. I remember going to the store and I was like, all right, Pop-Tarts are bad. Let me get a better option. <laughs> all right. Now I've learned the truth. Pop-Tarts are too sugary. It's dessert. Basically, this opened my eyes. I was like, oh, damn, this is literally a Jolly Rancher Pop-Tart. Of course this shit is candy. <laughs> I don't, <laughs> I'm not going to eat this. And then I was like, wait a minute. There's a healthy option. There's nature's path, organic generations. Look at this farm. It's Razzy raspberry. Raspberry is a fruit. Holy shit. This is the healthy option. Finally, I can have my, my cake and eat it too. <laughs> it's non GMO certified. And then I looked at the label and a lot of you are spamming same shit. <laughs> Same shit, same shit. <laughs> Bro, it's worse than that. <laughs> this is the Pop-Tart one. This is the Jolly Rancher Pop-Tart. 16 grams of sugar. That's a lot. That's Jolly Rancher Pop-Tarts. This is the USDA vegetarian, all natural, GMO, organic. <laughs> 18, bro. <laughs> it was worse for you. It was more unhealthy than Jolly Rancher Pop-Tarts. It also cost more and there was less in the pack. <laughs> it, it was a complete scam. And that's why I stick to my tried and true Chipotle steak burrito. But I found a quick video. It's from Penn and Teller. It's kind of a while ago. But it's basically about how our tastes can be skewed. Anyway, this is Penn and Teller's water bottle taste test. What was the actual source of these chic waters? <laughs> a garden hose <laughs> on the restaurant patio. <laughs> yeah, this yeah, is clean. It's, it's, it has a flavor to it. How would you compare it to tap water? Oh, yeah, definitely better than tap water. It doesn't have an apple taste. It's got, it's got a flavor that it almost feels like a, a beverage other than water, but without sugar or any additives. Lo de Robinet passed the taste test. It, it does feel glacier. Like, like, glacier oriented. Glacier, yeah, this is good. That's yeah. good. And this one, I don't, I don't taste the minerals so well much. Said, sir. Well, maybe it was time to let the diners know just what they've been drinking. Oh, they tell them? Now, what would you think if I told you that all of these waters came from the same garden hose? <laughs> That's so mean. That's so rude. Ah! Dude, that's so embarrassing after you just spent all that time. Uh, you shouldn't tell him, bro. <laughs> that's so, that's so fucking problem face. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna fucking kill you. <laughs> See me outside, mother. <laughs> that's what he's thinking, bro. From a water hose. <laughs> so keep that in mind. Next time you assume your taste buds are up to the task. Although I'll be honest with you. So I've seen that video and I, um, Ari, my fiance always talks about how she really can taste the difference in waters, all right? And I was like, bitch.
<laughs> no, you can't. It's marketing. You can't. And I was like, I was, I was getting mad at her. I was like, babe, I'm sorry to break it to you, babe. You can't. You can't. And uh, so I concocted a taste test. <laughs> I did different bottles and tap water, and I put them all in different cups, and I labeled them, and I tested it with her. And not only did she get all of them right, but I got mad that she was getting them right. So I cheated. I cheated and I, I changed the label just so I could get her, just so I could get one over on her because she was like being so smug about how she got it. And I cheated and then she knew I cheated. She wasn't even like, oh, oh, I guess I was wrong. She was like, no, I'm a hundred percent certain this is Dasani or whatever. And I was like, I was like, no, babe, look at the label. And she's like, she's like, I'm a, I, I know this is wrong. <laughs> and I had to break down and tell her. I was like, how the f***? So I, literally, I don't know if it's her or what, but she was able, I couldn't do it. I literally couldn't do it. But I I will say some people can. 100% Ari can. That was our edition of Marketing Monday. Uh, food Marketing Edition featuring Bergsy. I hope you enjoyed it. I am now going to watch this video.